Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to discuss Composer crossing $100 million in AUM, um, as well as a portfolio update at the end. So um, let's get started. So yes, for those of you who follow my channel, you know that Composer um, is my favorite broker. Um, I also use Schwab as well for my accounts, but um, Composer is the one I, I much prefer. And here we go. Celebrating 100 million in AUM, trust and innovation you can rely on. We're proud to announce we've crossed the 100 million mark in assets under management, showcasing the trust our customers have in us and the power of our innovative strategies. Composer automates your trading strategy, executing trades and rebalancing effortlessly. Experience AI-driven market response and portfolios that put you ahead. So, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a major milestone for them. Um, I believe that I was one of the um, first maybe 10 users uh, on Composer, so they've come a long way. Um, you can see here, this is their website. I don't know, this is probably way behind. I'm not sure how often they update this, but you know, not only in the 100 million AUM, but they've done over 2 billion in trading volume, 900,000 orders executed. I wouldn't be surprised if that's over a million now and 5 million back test run. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if that's 6 million now. Who knows? I don't know again when this was um, updated. But yeah, so initially, you know, it started out with, um, you would have an Alpaca account. Uh, I think I actually have a video when like they were, beta testing. I was one of their first users. Um, you could just see here. So you can see I had like $2,000 that I was just starting with an alpaca. Um, and this was on my old YouTube channel, Pietro's Manu's Finance. Um, I had an issue with that. So I, I transferred to Manu's compounding machine. Um, but that was about two years ago. And it would sink into alpaca and I could only run one strategy uh, at the time. And they've come a long, long way in the past two years. So I would not be surprised um, based on their growth that um, that $1 billion in the next few years uh, is, is attained. Just my personal opinion. Maybe I'll be wrong. Um, you know, I don't have I don't have information on their on their finances or anything, but just a, a guess that um, that they've, they've grown pretty tremendously. And I think they will continue to do so. Um, so, yeah, kudos to them for that. And um, speaking of Composer, let's come, let's start with, um, here we are uh, today. So really um, what's fascinating here, you see so far uh, for the year 17.13, um, you're doing quite well. But what's interesting actually is when you come in here, you can see that, um, and I always use quotation and I, and I feel it really applies to me. Um, you know, the ability to endure volatility is a superhuman power in investing. And, and, and that's one thing about to say that quotation. I mean, anyone can repeat those words, right? But when your cost basis is 290 and you drop down and you, you build off from 290, let's say 327 ish, and you drop down all the way here. And this is on April 19th, 276. So. Uh, I've gone, you know, April 19th all the way to today. So let's just take, let's just take some nice round numbers here. You know, even 339 minus 276, $63,000 um, since then, um, so, which is someone's year salary, right? So um, that's been really, really nice. And... Um, so if you were to annualize it, it's, you know, it depends if you were to, let's say if we ended at the end of May, uh, it's closer to 40% annualized. If we ended it, if I ended June, uh, ex you know, around this number, it's uh, around 33, 34. So I did that at 16.87 before the video. I guess I'm up a little bit since I did that about a half hour ago. Um, but yeah, in that 30 to 40% range annualized, uh, for those of you who follow this channel, you know that I, I did 33% last year, which was uh, featured in the Wall Street Journal. And, um, you know, so that's what I'm on pace for. Uh, doesn't mean that will happen, of course. Uh, anything can happen in financial markets. Um, but you can see that in some of my real super alpha strategies uh, here, um, you know, 5,500 cost basis. So if you take something like this, 
Um, you can see the annualized on some of these, you know, it annualizes at 240. So, um, you know, like even T triple Q for the long term, this is a different version, you know, 116. So you're getting some of these annual annualized out at, at triple digits. Um, will that happen? Um, I have no idea, right? I mean, it's hard for me to predict the future, impossible for me to predict the future, but it just goes to show you that, um, you know, thus far, uh, 2023 in Composer and 2024 in Composer, um, you know, I've done, done amazingly well, couldn't be happier um, with my returns. Um, this is one of uh, the beta ballers here, let's see. This one here annualizes out 47, so a lot lower than the leaders. Um, and again, you see max drawdown, so you know lower sharp ratio. And this is the thing with certain strategies. Again, my particular ability to deal with volatility. Many people couldn't take a 37% drawdown, um, even if they would. Let's just say it annualized out of 47. It hasn't performed for 47, but let's just say it annualized out on December 31st of 47. Many people couldn't take these numbers. They wouldn't be able to get the 47 because they couldn't endure the 37. They would panic sell or switch uh, strategies or tinker with the symphony or um, what have you. And so um, you can see that. And then, um, yeah, so just kind of scrolling through. So, yeah, you can see I'm one of the people within Composer that run many, many strategies. Um, so I'm likely to have less uh, major drawdowns. Um, but I'm unlikely to actually have, let's say, triple digit returns because if some people are running five or eight symphonies uh, and those symphonies are, are really doing quite well, um, they may get a 90% return, a uh, 110% return, a 60% return perhaps um, because of the, uh, the variety um, of symphonies that I'm running, it's, it's probably not likely for me to attain those kind of returns. Um, but, but again, I probably won't have the drawdowns um, uh, portfolio drawdowns, not symphony drawdowns, but overall portfolio drawdowns uh, that others may have. So, yeah, so that's, um, you know, Composer, um, you know, flirting with the 340. And what's interesting, um, you know, I also have an, an IRA um, with Composer that's about uh, almost 100,000. It's between 90 to 100,000. So basically, if you were to take the 340 and add 100, so that's you know, I have 440 in Composer. So if you just, for those, again, for those who follow this channel, you know, I'm a, pretty much everything I do relates to compound interest. And um, this is a cool little calculator on the money chimp present value. It's like, if I wanted to get to a million dollars in the next five years, what percentage would, do I need to have? And, and it would give me the present value. So again, if I have about 440, and this is probably pretty close because I have a little bit under, a hundred thousand that in that IRA. If I wanted to get a million dollars just in my composer accounts, so um, not including the Schwab, which I'm going to pull up now, and not including some other accounts, which are just kind of vu and chill, boglehead stuff, uh, and other brokers. Um, but just in composer, if I want to have a million dollars in composer in five years, so 2029 ish, um, I would need an 18 percent return. Uh, and again, because the present present value here, so you can play with it. Like, well, what if what if I got a thirty percent return? That means instead of having the four hundred and forty thousand that I have, if over the next five years I would only need to have a two hundred and sixty nine thousand uh, dollar account. So, like for example, let's do it. Let's do it just with the three forty and forget the IRA. So, let's say for example, like eighteen um, percent is both accounts. But if I want to do, okay, so 25, so 26 here, so let's do 23, okay, 23, 24, okay, so look at that. So it's not exact, you can see I'm at what, 339, not 341, but close enough. Um, let's just see if like 23.5 does anything here. Oh, go the other way, sorry. 25, 24.5, 334. Yeah, so we'll just keep it there. That's, that's actually closer. 
So in the next five years, if I wanted to take this um, composer account to a million dollars, I would need the compound capital at a 24% uh, return. Certainly uh, not out of the realm of possibility, no guarantees, of course, last year was uh, mid thirties in composer. Uh, we'll see this year I'm, I'm annualizing out in that 30 to 40% uh, as well. So, but you know, there will, there will be a down uh, year, certainly. So it's, you know, one year might be a 50% or 40% return. One year might be a negative 18%. So, you know, but overall, if I'm compounding capital annualized CAGR they're around the 24% um, in five years, this would, this would cross the million threshold, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, so let's move on now to Schwab. And for those of you who follow this channel, let's actually bring this just over there. Um, for those of you who follow this channel, you know that I'm actually using some options here, option selling, not option buying. Um, this isn't Reddit. Um, so uh, it's option selling, uh, which means I'm more of the casino. Um, than the gambler, which would be option buying for the most part. So um, I'm really kind of setting this up account as annuity-esque. I'm really looking to have this, um, you know, basically as as uh, income. Um, so you can see here, I like to pull this up, uh, investment income here. Um, so the next short-term goal is 24,000. So I'm getting closer. This is the next 12 months. If you do it for 24, it's obviously a little bit lower, um, you know, because the first few months weren't, weren't at that amount. But if you look out, you know, from July of this year, July of next year, based on my acquisitions, yeah, it's kind of a guesstimate from Schwab. But the first, the first short term goal is 24,000. Uh, and then the longer term goal on this is really like a five to eight, five to 10, five to 8,000, six to 10, somewhere in that range. Um, so that it basically um, replaces a job and it's not using the 4% rule. So it's not using something where I'm selling assets to survive. It's just that every month um, um, dividend income, uh, option premium comes off of this account and it's enough to survive which uh, on its own without, you know, my real estate holdings, uh, sh you know, which are long term rentals, uh, short term rentals, um, just this Schwab account alone. Um, that's that's the aim. So I'm buying a lot of like yield max to find stuff with the premium this year. Um, and my plan is every year to essentially uh, take my premiums, which uh, last month was about eighteen hundred. The couple months for that was um, over five thousand. So depending on what the premium is income generated is to take that and buy income. So this year, like I said, it's a lot of defiance and yield max stuff. Um, next year, I probably shifted from defiance and uh, yield max into like closed end funds, PIMCO funds, things like that. Um, so, and then every year just kind of, kind of like ch change what I'm buying as alternative income. So, but, but the other things are continuing to snowball. So i um, very, very happy with this. Um, you can see though, because of this shift, and such that you know the return here is actually uh, only not it's a, actually a little bit higher because of the option premium or excuse me the option value so you'd actually since I don't close positions here you'd actually have to add ten thousand which would boost this up let's just I don't know 10 11 percent um, for the year which is you know still pretty decent it's a little bit under the s p it's not you know the 17 percent return but ideally if I can create this as, a, as an income account, um, let's say, uh, and then by, let's say 20, 28, 20, 29, 20, 30, um, be able to live exclusively and solely off of this. And then um, from there, the composer uh, just continues to compound and just compound, compound, compound. I would never have to sell uh, in order to pay a bill or uh, take a vacation or, or anything of the sort. Um, so, yeah, so that is that. Um, uh, it's pretty much it. I was going to talk about um, a little bit of Airbnb. I don't have it pulled up though, so I'll just just briefly mention it. Um, my Airbnb Brahma Bella. So let's see if we can go here. Let's see if we can. Just, I usually have all my web pages pulled up beforehand, but I think it's going to work. Okay, there it is. So this is my uh, short-term rental in the mountains of North Car Carolina, um, and. Um, 
we've just gotten our 39th five-star review on Airbnb, uh, and we have six on VRBO. So we have 45 um, five-star reviews now. So I'm um, really, really happy with this. Um, you know, people are really loving it, get a lot of families. We have a blueberry orchard there. Um, July is blueberry season, so a lot of the guests will pick blueberries. And um, yeah, it's just a gorgeous uh, area of America, and especially with the vineyard uh, industry developing. Actually, we have two two new vineyards open in, in the area. So Trio Vineyards and Castello Barone. And what's cool is it's a lot of Italian vineyards. So being both an Italian and an Italian file, um, you know, a lot of the grapes, uh, Sangiovese, Montepulciano, uh, Negro Amaro, so on and so forth. So yeah, very, very, uh, very, very happy with this property. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Any questions, comments, keep it coming. Um, and again, congrats to Composer on 100 million in AUM.